So the solar carport is now finished and it's producing power. Last night I wired it up, I ran some conduit on the side to my workshop, and in about 10 minutes we're gonna hit peak irradiance. And this thing's rated for 12,300 watts, but that's with the maximum amount of bifacial gain. Without bifacial gain, it's only 9,840 watts. So we're gonna run inside and see how much we're producing, and I have something really cool to show you. Also, I should have filmed this on a sunny day. It looks so much cooler now but it did make it easy to install so luckily we had a cool day because when you're up there installing those panels it gets super hot so right now the solar carport is connected to the flex boss and you'll notice that I rebuilt this entire system. Now I configured it this way so we can teach beginners what a microgrid interconnect device is. And that's what the grid boss is. It's a gateway. So all it does is it connects between your meter and your panel. And then once that's installed, you can install inverters and batteries very easily. Anyways, we're about to hit peak irradiance, so let's see how much it's actually producing. And I actually installed the screen, it's really nice. And I actually had the wrong settings. I was doing a forced discharge and it was limiting my solar, but now it's not. And we're pulling 8,600 watts. What I like to do is I go to the graph and I see where it's peaking. So we're about to hit the peak and then it will start to slowly drop. 8,700. I don't think it's gonna hit 9,000, you guys. It's just too far off. Wait, what are these panels rated for? STC is 9,840. We should be producing more. That means we're not getting bifacial gain. I mean, we're getting some degree, obviously, but not the numbers on the spec sheet. I think the bifacial gain was a lot better when I had them on the bunker vault, probably because there was a lot more stuff behind it that was reflecting on it. Right now, it's just a big tan building. Maybe I need to paint this thing white. That would be fun to measure and we could see how big of a difference it makes. Peak irradiance was five minutes ago, so I think that's it, guys. There's not a single cloud in the sky. So 8,700 divided by STC output is only 88%. We're not getting anywhere close to 12,000 watts. What a bummer. But maybe this brown and tan building is not the best for a bifacial panel. Now, I just put this container home in last week, but before that, the bunker vault panels had really good bifacial gain. But it had this entire yard of white concrete behind it. Now there's a big difference between the bunker vault panels where when I stand on that roof and I look this way, it's very bright and there was a lot of light reflecting in my face. But right here, it's all closed in and it's very dark. Now this environment is very bright and there's lots of things behind me that are reflecting light this way. It's like you have to squint your eyes no matter which way you look. If we put a single bifacial solar panel in the middle, we would probably have the best bifacial gain ever. But if we add more panels and we make a large array, it will shade the entire thing. And that will reduce the bifacial gain because it will be entirely shaded. Now of course I want more bifacial gain, but this is now a cool area in the desert. So I'm not gonna change a thing. I like it like this. I've never been able to use this part of my property because it's so freaking hot. But when I was planning this system, I really thought I would have more bifacial gain because they're lifted up so high. But if you have a dark environment behind it, it doesn't seem to make that much of a difference. We're not even pulling STC right now. We might in a couple months, but at my latitude, we're not doing it. Now, in my first video with the solar carport, a lot of people complained that the footings were too small. So I had to explain to everybody that we actually worked with an engineering team, with my contractor, and with the manufacturer, and we all went on a phone call and talked about what this project needs. I don't know anything about concrete, so I hire professionals. Also, we're not using concrete anchors. We're using J-hooks with these massive studs and lots of rebar but my viewers did have a good point that I should have made them square so it matches the base plate. So aesthetically, I could have done a better job, but strength-wise, this is totally fine. Also, I wanna show you guys the tiny home. So we used a 90 ton crane to plop this in my backyard and inside it's like a little house. So it has a little kitchen. We're gonna put a stove right there, a fridge right here, and a full-size bathroom. And then it has a closet. And then over here, there's an actual bedroom. I'm gonna put a mini split on that wall and the water and everything actually works. 
And a lot of my neighbors have these things. There's a guy up the street with like four of them. So I thought, hey, why not try it? It'd be pretty cool if we put some solar panels on the roof and we powered it off grid. Now the water connection is from one of my garden hoses. And then for the sewage connection, I had an RV sewage pipe back here. I just ran that pipe over to the container home. And now it's like a little house. How cool is that? And tomorrow I'm gonna put all the solar panels up there. So it'll look super cool. And this cable actually powers the whole thing. So I have a 12,000 X XP behind the camera. I use a generator cord and it powers all the circuits. And I have to swap out this water heater because I don't want propane. Whenever I have a solar generator with an inverter output, we can just plug in the container home and test it here. That's pretty much it for this video. Just a quick update in the backyard with all this construction. I'll make more videos, but I haven't had a single minute to do so. So I hope you guys like it. It's a pretty cool little container home and I will see you in the next video. Bye.